Hi, this is Greg in Pensacola, Florida. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Tonight is part nine of the modular end build with Herstarts Molds. All right, when we left off last week, we had finished the booths for the bar, and we're moving on to uh, the last two bedrooms for the build. And so the first bedroom, well, this video is going to concentrate on the bedroom with a large window. Uh, pretty simple build, nothing too crazy about it. It's a standard 3x5 room. Uh, it does have one decorative piece here. This is the actual large window that you're looking at, and a couple walls. Um, and basically, this is what the finished piece is going to look like down here. So not a whole lot different in the setup than what we did in the other room. The only piece in here that's a little bit different is this large window. Now, the only thing I have to say about I think this right here is where um, this needs to be updated in the instructions. Oop, and my battery's going to die in a minute. Um, what you're looking at is Bruce is saying you got a two inch gap right here, so this is a two inch arch. But I grabbed the two inch arch, which is right here, and I started looking. I'm like, man, that doesn't really fit right on top of a three inch block. So I'm looking at it again. And so then I got around to counting the number of blocks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the two inch one only has six. It's a two and a half inch one that actually goes in this spot right here. So that two and a half with the three inch block right here, everything fit fine. All the, these three pieces fit in here great. They all buckled up great. So that's just something to keep aware that this is the two and a half inch arch, not the two inch arch. Everything else floats right in here fine no problem at all you got these little pieces that you glue together first let them dry you've got uh, you'll sand down the top just a little bit and for the people that asked on there I had like three four people ask about being able to they like seeing the build so what I've done is uh, as I'm building this I'm going to narrate on the you know, I'll run the music and the time lapse I'm not gonna have you sit through 25 minutes of watching glue dry so I'll time lapse the videos down to between three and four minutes for each part and um, put the music on there but I'm gonna try and put an overlay track on so I can talk a little bit about the process I'm doing let the music run in the fill times and stuff like that we'll see how that goes so I'm sure I will mention it at the end of the video but if that's something you like let me know and uh, I'll keep doing it that way so we'll get on to the build we're gonna go through the entire building it we're gonna build the entire piece from the blocks up and then uh, you know we'll glue them all together. We'll let it dry. We'll paint them, and I'll take you through all the painting, painting and highlighting steps. And then I'll show you the finished piece at the end. So stand by, and I'll be back in just a little bit. I started with the uh, arch because I figured this would have the uh, need the most drying time. So you know I built the outside of the arch, and again this is that two and a half internal piece on the arch. And then I uh, put together a little decorative piece that's going to go on top of that arch. And I also put together the uh, three barrels. Well, not barrels, but it's going to be the two stone pillars. And each pillar is made out of three of those um, little round pieces right there. So I did start glue them together first, and then I set them aside so they could dry up. Next part, yeah, I just lay out the floor tiles. I draw around it with a gold metallic sharpie because it shows up pretty good on the black... Uh, foam core and uh, just a matter of laying down the tile patterns and just putting them on. This is your standard 3x5 and it's going to have a, a two, two enter exits out of the room. So I use the Legos just to try to square it up a little bit and uh, I put the two, uh, the two small pieces that denote where the uh, entrance and exit doors will be. This is a small side piece I put together. Um, this piece actually turned out a little warped. I ended up having to take the bottom tile off there. I don't know what was going on with that stone. That was one of those ones that I put together at the beginning. Um, but it had a little bit of a curve to it, so I did end up popping that bottom piece off and redoing it, and it seemed to straighten it out pretty good. pulled with the other pieces I had pulled the pieces out that I needed before I started recording and I found out I forgot a whole wall so that's just me digging through the box pulling out the blocks that I'm gonna need and uh, putting this last wall section together now when I do build this I think you'll see off to the side I believe off to the left here is the uh, 
is that little nubby piece corner. I started, I like building the corners together now. So one long piece of the wall and then the shorter piece. So yeah, you'll see right here, I start sliding that little corner piece I just made underneath. And I do use a uh, craft mat. So I can line the pieces up along a straight line along those gold lines. And you know, I usually get pretty solid 45 degree corners. And in here I was going in and adding some more glue cause I got a little light in a couple places, so places where I was light and glue, I kind of pulled the blocks apart and added some more in there. Put some decorative pieces on top, a little bit of the ruined field stone. up. I need to get some more Legos because obviously I don't have enough. And here we go back to that very first piece. I use a little sandpaper to sand down the top so it'll lay in there square. And then I dry fit everything first. I dry fitted the decorative piece on top and then I just sanded flat the uh, made sure I had two good flat areas on the uh, two stone pillars. Put some glue on a decorative piece, a little bit of glue on stone pillars, put it in there. And we pretty much call the assembly done. Painting process, uh, the first part I start with is the uh, floor for the room. And uh, we're using the uh, earth tone painting method that's on Bruce's site. This, uh, all my colors, I got the Olympic paint. So this color here is a chocolate truffle that I'm putting down as a base coat. And then we move over to the, uh, the wall pieces. And this is the lava gray. So this is the castle gray dark that he's talking about. And the Olympic color for that is lava gray. He has a sheet for Sherman Williams, Olympic Valspar, and uh, the Walmart brand of paint. And uh, I did use the Olympic because it is a paint and primer in one. So it, it's sealed up pretty hard on the pieces that have dried. And usually with the, uh, the initial base coat, I put it on at night. And I let this first base coat dry overnight. The highlights, you know, I do the highlights pretty close back to back, but as you see, this kind of makes a mess. Um, it's not too bad of a mess. I made a way bigger mess when I did the, uh, the space corridor painting. Oh my god, it was a huge mess, but kind of contained it a little bit. That green paper underneath um, is the kind you get from a dental office. My daughter's a dental hygienist, and this is some leftover stuff from when she went to school. So it's got a plastic backing on it, so liquids don't actually run through onto my mat and stuff so other than it sticks a little bit to the bottom but it's not too bad because that part's going onto the foam core anyways it does uh, save my craft board and my desk so it makes painting in the office pretty easy so just a matter of a nice thick coat um, I do go back and try to touch it up with a regular paintbrush after it dries because you know, you can see it on film pretty easy. You see these white spots show up, like off to the left. You see that one little small piece, that white spot on top. I usually go back and try and touch all that up. It's not quite as obvious when you're sitting there, uh, when you're sitting there painting it right in front of you. That doesn't show as brightly as it does on film. I know I've caught a couple pieces on film where it's um, where that stuff really shows. So here's the uh, first uh, dry brush. And this is the uh, Quicksilver. This is the Castle Gray Medium. So this is our first set of highlights that we're putting on. I try to go pretty light. Um, I like it skewed a little darker. So I try not to go too heavy with the, uh, with the highlights on there because I do like the grayish color versus a brighter white. And on this piece right here, I did get a little heavy. I didn't end up after filming this when I was looking at it after everything dried. It was the second highlight got way too light on that end piece. So I did go back and repaint it with the base coat and uh, re-dry brushed it, you know, so it matches all the other pieces. I just got a little too much paint on one of those brushes and I, you know, I hit it and I was like, oh, that's a little, that's a little wider than I wanted it. I 
only give it about 20 minutes between the uh, the first highlight and the finishing highlight on there. It's not it's not like painting a base coat where I let it bleed. Over. So now we're moving on to the second highlight for the uh, in the earth tone for the floor, and this is the cowboy hat color. So this is your medium earth tone medium, and uh, for the Olympic variant, it's the cowboy hat. I really like when this stuff dries. You know, I know on film, I mean, it looks good right there, but man, it looks really good sitting on my table the way the light hits that. Now we move into the final highlight with the uh, the castle gray. So the castle gray light in Olympic is the abacron, no abracadabra color. So just hitting it, just bringing out just those final highlights on there. Try to you know, match it up with the rest of the pieces I've done. Try to keep it consistent and. Uh, Pretty quick process. See here, see how white that got on that side? I got way too heavy handed on that piece. And so I ended up going back and redoing it. But overall, when this part's done, you'll see the finished product, and I'm really happy with how it came out. So And we're back. And this is a completed bedroom with large window. Um I did paint up some accessories to put in here just to get a feel of what these bedrooms are gonna look like, you know, and how much furniture I can put in there and just kind of get a uh to bounce some colors around in the room to see what I liked. But overall, the build was pretty easy. It's your standard 3x5 room with two exits on there. I know we're going to make some uh, pieces that fit in these one inch doorways over here to block them off. So there could be like a fireplace down here at this end, you know, and stuff like that. So there will be some different stuff that, you know, that if we don't have two exits out of the room, these other doorways can be blocked. So you only have a single entrance and exit to the bedroom. Um, Let's say I painted up some of the accessories. I'm pretty happy with how they came out. I just did some simple colors on them, two, three colors on each piece, and that's it. Didn't wash them, didn't seal them, didn't do anything else on there. And I, I was pretty happy with the results. The uh, the bed itself is just a uh, dark green. This is uh, one of the Army Painter greens. And uh, I did some white. And then this is a uh, burnt umber for the uh, the furniture side itself. And so this took about five ten minutes of paint really uh, not a big deal I'll do some more with some blue some more green maybe a couple red sheets on there so I'll you know, throw some different color patterns around the end the uh, coat cabinet is the uh, is the chocolate bar color from Apple Barrel and then I did a nutmeg Apple Barrel color for these uh, these really light looking brown highlights on there and then a little bolt gun metal where the hinges are for the metallic again less than 10 minutes to paint did a super light dry brush on it nothing major but I think you can see the contrast in that it'll look good in the room and it doesn't take you an hour to paint these little pieces on here because I think some of that stuff may drive you crazy in the long run when you see just how many of these accessory pieces that you're gonna have that you can paint you know you can paint them as you go along as you're building scenarios and stuff like that but you know, for outfitting each room, I think a few colors on each piece is probably all you really need. Then this little, let me pull this away here. This is just a little half, kind of a half dresser piece. Um, this is that nutmeg color, just on a jar. That jar sitting there could be full of water, could be whatever you want it to be inside the room. Uh, the book. I used the same green I used on the bed sheets for the back of the book and I just painted a nice bright white on the pages. Later on I may I may paint another book and put some black lines on there like there's text uh, just to see how that looks you know just see make sure that doesn't run or look funny you know or if I can make the squiggle small enough but you can easily tell that's a book sitting an open book sitting on top of the table so we'll see I'll do one of each I'll pick which format I like and just continue on with it. And then the last thing over here is this little dish with the, uh, I made apples, so I painted the red, the fruit inside red. Um, he's got a bunch of these bowls. Some have like soup, stew, or something in it on there. Then he's got empty ones, and then we have ones with looks like fruit. So I'll paint up some more of these with some green apples, maybe a combination of green and red. Try not to make it look too Christmassy, but, um, you know, and then this is just the same light tan color that we used on the uh, chair boots also. And then this piece right here is just two uh, corner pieces. Make a nice little half round piece. And I did the chocolate bar color on there with a little bit heavier dry brush just so I could kind of nick up the edge a little bit. You know, not antique, but you know, make it look like it's been used, like stuff's been sitting on top of here, you know, that it 
didn't come straight out of the store, you know, to the uh, to the inn. And then we have the uh, the room itself, you know, three by five. We did the uh, two color highlight method here on the floor. We did the three color highlight that you saw in the video on the outside. And with the video, leave in the comments if you like this format, because I had three or four people ask um, to put the time lapse or see the assembly of the rooms again. So I put it in, and I tried to do an overlay track where I, sh uh, where I talk some, and uh, you know, talk about the build, talk about the painting, what the painting method was, and then you know, of course, there's the music underlying it. So it showed you the whole build of from putting it together to painting it to this point right here. So if you like that, I'll keep doing that format. I do have a couple tweaks I want to try for the next video because um, I've already recorded the building of the walls for the next bedroom. The building and painting of the floor is already um, built. But what I did is I took snapshots of all the wall pieces prior to painting. And so that'll they'll kind of be still shots within the video of before we go to the assembly step so that you can see what these walls look like up close before they're painted and before they get assembled onto the board and glued on so but doing the accessories was fun it only takes them you know half a minute to put this stuff in your room you know I thought these three pieces right here was a pretty good balance So then in here, so my big old hands aren't all up in the camera. We'll move that around. And so the room's accessorized. It looks like a bedroom. Anyone can tell that this is a bedroom, but you still have plenty of room to put figs in there. So I got, you know, I got room between the bed and the wall. I've got room at this entrance door coming in. So I could still drop maybe a little chest or something in a corner of the room, you know, even and still have plenty of room for figures to move around. And so talking about the accessories, I did these, what's that, six pieces right here really quick just to get an idea of what I like. Got tons more accessories over there in the box to paint up. We got logs and fire and all that stuff. So what I was going to do is just take a video, turn on the camera, let it run, start painting, and start talking. Kind of an episode zero, who I am, what my gaming interests are, where my gaming interests started, you know, the whole how I sold my soul for the red box back in the day. Um, yeah, you know, it's just to tell you the story. Get you, so you know me a little bit better, the type of stuff that I'm interested in, you know, and then maybe I can hear from you guys some stuff that you're interested in, or if you have some common interest, maybe I can expand on that in some later videos. But here's the room. It's done. I appreciate you guys taking the time out to watch my videos. I appreciate all the new subscribers that have shown up over the last week. I've had a really good influx. So thank you for the new subscribers for hitting that subscribe button. And thank you to the previous, you know, my past subscribers that have been here for sharing the videos, for liking the videos, for the, you know, the words getting out. I think the project's coming along pretty good. I'm really happy with what it's looking like. Guys in my gaming group are like, oh my God, are you going to sell this thing? And I'm like, uh, no. And, um, but, uh, it's, uh, I'm having a lot of fun. So it's been a good time recording the videos. I do like interacting. I try to rep reply to all the comments I get. So if you see the comments on the videos, you should see a reply on mine or I'll thumb it up if it's just a quick, hey, I like your videos and stuff like that. You know, so I do try to interact. I do try to get back with all the comments on there. So again, you guys have a great night. I appreciate you watching. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.